You're with Newsmakers on the panel, Cheryl Sutherland, Andrew Gunn and Jamie Goff. Despite vigorous support for a stay of execution, the Education Minister has dealt a death blow to Aurangi School, which is scheduled to close in a matter of weeks. Now the mad scramble is on to enrol uh, those 80 plus students in new schools, even though Aurangi will continue to fight for its survival in court. Did the Minister make the right call, Andrew? No. I think this stinks. Um, is it really only two million dollars that they're building? Two million? That, that, that is the value of Bill English's house. And let's not go there. But seriously, that is just pocket money. Um, yeah, it, it really stinks. I, I just have this, this vision of this, this school with low decile with, with, with kids. Um, some of English is a second language or they've got a, you know, bi a bilingual unit there. Mm. Um, and it's like, and even Anne Tolley was quoting the paper saying, I'm not sure exactly where they'll go. They'll just somehow be absorbed. I don't believe that. Of course, this is your turf being Fendleton Waimari yes, Community Board Member. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we as a board, we're very supportive of our own school. They're fantastic. Um, you can understand both sides of the argument with anything that we discuss on Newsmakers. There's two sides to the story. And Anne Tolley makes some, she makes some points. I don't believe that they are overly valid because I think that the, the niche and the students that attend that school mm. aren't catered for in the other schools around that area and, and I, I've seen some wonderful things happen there so I think it, it's a very sad day for actually the Fenton Waimari Ward on the whole and there's only so much us mere community board members can do other sure. than write letters and, and, and that sort of stuff and really really uh, stick our necks in line and say this is what we believe but at the end of the day it's not our call. So it, it is sad. The does appear to have been overwhelming community support for this school and even corporates, Ballantines, mm. support this school. Um, do you find it strange that the bureaucracy has managed to overcome all of that goodwill in the wider community? Not at all. Bu bureaucracy frequently overcomes goodwill. I think that's a fact of life. Colour me cynical today. But I'm beginning to wonder, with Anne Tolly, whether she actually knows what the devil she's doing. Because this isn't the first um, drama that we've seen over education, uh, educational issues. There's the cutting of community funding and all that, so those sorts of issues. So um, I think, yeah, it's a really, really bad decision. I think any decision to close a school has to be very, very carefully thought out. And it has to be based on something a little less vague than sorts of statements that Anne Tolly is making. The future of our nation is in educating children. That is an utter non-negotiable item and mm. we're pouring zillions of dollars into this crazy emission trading scheme, which obviously we're going to get onto shortly, and um, we're cutting um, funds to education and to health, I saw in the paper this morning. Two million dollars, as you rightly point out, Andrew, is chicken feed. Absolutely. And it's not any school either because this, mm. this is a school which is very, very location specific. To the people that go, there's a lot of refugees and those yeah. schools mm. aren't just equipped. The other schools that they're going to have to go to aren't mm. equipped to handle them. They've yes, got so some that's going to be another cost, isn't it? So there's your $2 million yeah. gone. Well, and... it's, it's the standard thing about you know the, the kid in the class that, um, that learns differently. Cause that's a very PC way of saying that they aren't yeah. very bright or something. Yeah, right. But um, for, for, for ones that perhaps learn in a different way from people that weren't born in New Zealand, mm. this school yeah. caters to it very, very well. And I mm. think it's going to be more of a distraction than for students and um, because it's never a one size fits all yeah. and in other schools it's going to it could potentially cost more money in the long run yeah mm. a couple of things which um, I don't think the education minister has fully explained is whatever happened to the Naitahu offer for a joint venture this well, public seems private to have partnership into a black hole doesn't it mm, yeah um, Andrew the other aspect of course that remains very live at the moment is the idea of pursuing legal action and getting an injunction for starters I wonder at what point, for the sake of the children, does the school just have to accept reality? Or should they fight on? Sorry, when you said for the sake of the children, I had a terrible flash of Christine Rankin there. <laughs> 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 uh, um, well, I don't know. I mean, um, uh, I would say that they should continue fighting, and I'm not, and I'm not sure how the injunction is, is to be funded and that sort of thing. But, mm. but in principle... Well, I don't think... I don't think that... Uh, but, no, I say go for it, really. Yeah. It's got the back of the community and... Mm. Do you think this is the end of it? I have no idea. Um, it's going to be an interesting one to watch and when you're saying do you fight for it, do you not, of course I'd love to see them fight for it, but mm. look, I don't know if it's a lost cause and we're wasting our time. It's, it's really, really sad and I don't know the answer, unfortunately. All right.
Now, of course, the Global Summit on Climate Change will kick off in Copenhagen in 10 days' time. Um, there have been a stream of damning emails leaked from a UK climate change research centre, which critics claim proves that scientists have fabricated the case for global warming. Britain's Telegraph newspaper has gone all out dubbing the email scandal Climate Gate. Should we be alarmed by these emails, Ms Sutherland? Um, I don't think we should be alarmed by the emails at all, but I think we should certainly be alarmed by the way that the climate change cult has taken over um, politics and certainly all of our thinking. The IPCC, which I think stands for the International Panel on Climate Change, you've got to worry about something that's called a panel, don't you? <laughs> have got nine different scenarios covering the next 90 years. Now they say that the temperature rises in these different scenarios range from about 0.8 to 4 degrees. Is that Celsius? Yes, it's Celsius. Sorry about that. A little moment of confusion there. It's the blonde. That's right. And they say that between now and 2100, the sea, level will, sea levels will rise a maximum of 59 centimetres. Now that is not a hell of a lot. From a temperature point of view, think about people living in the Sahara or people living in Iceland. We're used to extremes. I don't see that a planet with a slightly higher carbon emission level is going to be a dangerous place to live in. The other issue for me too is the methodology that's been used in these projections. The projections are based on population growth and economic growth. Now last time I looked, 99% of the economists who have made predictions over the last God knows how many years have been totally wrong. So a tiny little factor of um, a miscalculation in an economic projection could blow all this stuff out of the water. I could go on and on, but I can see Jamie and Andrew are sort of getting no, all ready I'm, to say no, this. No, I'm enjoying doing your work, I, I Cheryl. I'm enjoying it. Do you? I've been following this for a while because it really annoys me. I try and follow it, but I just get bored by it, to yeah. be honest. Well, well, actually, can, I just, can I just throw a quick fire question at um, Andrew and Jamie? Are you convinced that man-made climate change is fact, or is it still contestable theory? Well, for me, it do I don't have to be completely convinced. It seems that... The only people who are sure about the future are the people who turn off your doorstep on a Saturday morning when you're trying to do the vacuuming and say, have you heard the good news? <laughs> Scientists um, always allow for the other point of view. How I see it is that the overwhelming majority of experts in this area say that man-made climate change uh, is real and it can, will have devastating effects and we can do something about it. Mm. And for me, I trust the vast majority of scientific opinion. It's like as I do when I get on a plane, uh, when I uh, you know, send my kids to be vaccinated, that sort of thing. So basically the fact that I'm not certain about it mm. really to me isn't an issue. The people, the people within that group who have um, generated these emails I think are stupid and should mm. be censured and kicked out and they've gone completely overboard. Uh, but to me, that is a distraction from the bigger thing. Okay. Jamie? Yeah, for the first time in a long, long while with Andrew and Cheryl talking about climate change there, I, was, I actually found it quite interesting. My eyes glaze over when I start hearing about this ETS. It as is much as I duty. want to yeah. pay attention to it, and I think I'm yeah. on the community board, I, I'm talking about it on Mike's show, I, I need to be educated in it, and by the end of it I think, oh, what did they say? I've done it again. <laughs> I, know the, I, I know the basics of it, and um, from what I understand of, of climate change, I can't answer the question again, I really don't know much, do I? Um, as far as it goes with, is it, is it fact, is it, is it fiction? I think that there probably is a lot of it which, which is true and is based on, on, on fact. Mm. And, but at the end of the day, you know, who, who really knows? And as far as global warming goes, I'm not feeling too much warmer come cup this year. No. <laughs> Especially after coming back from Thailand. You had to go to Thailand to feel warmer. <laughs> yes. It was some sort of sick joke when I got back. <laughs> we'll uh, take a break, we've got plenty more to come. Do stay with us.